Welcome to the Android App Training Level 1 course, Beginning App Inventor for Non-Coders. If you're interested in enrolling in this course, you can find it at androidapptraining.com. We've already installed App Inventor on our computers, made sure that we have the correct version of Java installed, and learned how to navigate the online classroom. Now we're going to learn about what's called the Components Editor. The Components Editor is where you find the various components you want to use in your app, such as adding buttons, images, sound effects, and more advanced components such as activity starters, databases, and accessing phone features like calling and texting. You'll also be using the Components Editor to create the graphic layout of your app. Let's start by looking at the palette area on the left side of the screen. You can think of the palette area as your toolbox for creating apps. Each drawer in your toolbox contains tools that will allow you to complete various tasks. Just like you may need a screwdriver or a hammer to complete a task at your home, you may need an activity starter or a database to complete a job in App Inventor. The first drawer in our toolbox we see is full of the basic components of App Inventor, such as buttons, checkboxes, a clock, image placeholder, the list picker, and text box, and so on. In the Android App Training Online course, you'll find a list of each component in App Inventor, what it does, the functions you can perform with it, an explanation of each of the properties you can change within each component, and the events you can create for that component using the Blocks Editor, which we'll learn about in our next video. As we keep searching through the drawers in our toolbox, you see an area called Media, which has things like the camera function, an audio player, sound effects, and a video player. Under Animation, we can create image sprites. In the Social drawer, you'll find some phone functionality such as working with contacts and emails, phone calls, phone numbers, texting, and using Twitter. In the Sensors area, you can find components for geotagging and adjusting the orientation of the screen in your app. In the Screen Arrangement area, we'll find some components that will help us with the graphic layout of our app. We can work with horizontal and vertical arrangements, and we can create a table arrangement. We have a few more areas here, one called Other Stuff, and you'll actually use these quite a bit. This is where you'll find some of the more advanced components, such as the Activity Starter, working with barcodes and Bluetooth, a speech recognizer, text-to-speech, a database, and a web component. Under the Not Ready for Prime Time shelf, you'll find a few of the things that are being worked on in App Inventor, such as fusion tables, game client, sound recorder, voting capabilities, and a web viewer. App Inventor is continuously being improved, and some of these things that are in the Not Ready for Prime Time shelf will at some point be completely finished and free of bugs. And you can rest assured that they're going to add more functionality to App Inventor as time goes on. Now let's look at the Components viewer in the middle of the screen. This is where you'll place the components you want to use in your app and where you prepare the graphic layout. Please note that what you see in the Components Editor isn't always what you're going to see on your phone or other Android device, so we'll show you how to fix your graphic layout when we discuss connecting your Android device to App Inventor and using the phone emulator for those without an Android phone. I'm going to go back to the basic drawer in our palette, and I'm going to drag a couple components onto the viewer so that we can see what it looks like. So let's add a button. And let's add a placeholder for an image. You can see that they popped into our viewer right here. I've got my button, and I've got a placeholder for an image. You'll also see that the button and image placeholder that we just put in our viewer showed up under the components area right here. We can highlight our button, and we can highlight our image. Here you can change the name of each component or delete them entirely. Next, we're going to look at the properties area right here, where you can change a multitude of properties specific to each component. If I highlight the button component, you'll see that I can change over a dozen characteristics of my button. Here we can change the background color, we can bold our text, we can make it italics. We can even change our font size. Let's change that to 30 just so you can see what happens. If we then look over here, we can see our text size changed. We can add an image for our button so it looks a little bit better than that gray one on the left side there. We can change the text for our button. We can change the alignment, text color, and we can do things like change the width. So if I click on the width area, and I click on Fill Parent, and OK, now we see that our button fills up the whole screen because we're working with the width of the button right there. So now that we've gotten an idea of what's in the Components Editor and what it does, 
let's take a look at the blocks editor before we create our first app. And feel free to play around with the components editor for as long as you like. You really can't break it.